What is going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well on the official embargo date for RTX 4090 Founders Edition unboxings. No reviews today or numbers or stats of any kind, but we were given the option to do an unboxing if we wanted to right now, so I'm sure you'll be seeing some other videos throughout your feed. As I said, review numbers and data frame rates will all be coming later. I'm not going to disclose the exact date because I'm not sure exactly if we can do that or not. I don't think we can, but today we can show unboxing. So I'm happy to share with you the 4090 Founders Edition, which was sent to me by NVIDIA, not being paid to make this video at all. It was completely optional if we wanted to do the unboxings, and if I was a consumer looking to buy a 4090, I would hope that there'd be some unboxing videos out there as I like to watch those things when I'm making a purchase decision or just waiting for the product to arrive. So yeah, 4090 Founders Edition, not 100% certain if this is retail packaging, but it could be, especially for, you know, a $1,600 card. I wouldn't be surprised if they went all out um, with the packaging on this, but the box that even the box came in was pretty interesting. Definitely engineered, like, specifically for this card as it fit like a glove and sort of swung out on the sides and opened up like Lamborghini doors, and then the RTX 4090 box itself does slide out. It's got the silver and black look. As a Raider fan, I definitely approve of uh, NVIDIA's commitment to excellence, just like the Raiders. Commitment to the silver and black. Oh, yes. The GeForce RTX 4090 on the outside, as you can see with that new font. And this box also opens from the front uh, over the top, and there's these little stickers on the side that you that you uh, you have to tear. You don't really have to tear them off completely. They just sort of peel back, and then the box just lifts up and reveals the massive, chunky boy of the RTX 4090 Founders Edition graphics card, and it is a chunky boy. I actually tried putting it on my scale, uh, this little guy right here, which I keep around for, you know, weighing out, like, uh, spices, like grams of spices for cooking, like down to the thousandth of the gram, just, you know, thousandth decimal point, because I just like to be accurate with my spices. It was too heavy for that, though. Just said chunky boy. So the card itself, you've all pretty much already seen it, and it's not too much of a, uh, Leap in terms of its physical design from the RTX 30 series and the 3090, 3090 Ti Founders Edition cards. They did add a bigger fan on it, which they claim can push about 20% additional airflow uh, through the heatsink on the RTX 4090 Founders Edition graphics card. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of the design. I'm a huge fan of these. I love that they've, you know, gone away from the blower style coolers in the last few generations, and they're really actually trying to make cards that aren't just solidly built, but also cool pretty well. But I've been a Founders Edition uh, buyer going back to the 900 series. I just always like that machined aluminum. It's a very satisfying, even though the thing is going to be sitting in a computer and I'm never going to touch it most of the time, that unboxing experience of getting like an aluminum card that's just solid metal and not like plastic foo-foo shit. I just, that's why I've always liked Founders Edition cards. They are just the tits. Um... That's just my personal opinion, you know. Of course, there's other great add and board partner cards that give you better overclocking. You might get better cooling. Maybe it'll run a little bit quieter in operation, but I just always like the Founders Edition cards, so I don't know. They just always sort of stuck with me. Other side of the card, again, nothing too just nothing too uh, exciting over here. Pretty much looks exactly like the 30 series, so they, they found a design that worked for them, and uh, they're sticking with it through the 40 series, and honestly, I'm not mad about it. I'm glad to see that it's making a return. They don't have to reinvent the wheel every single generation with the cooler. They could just continue to adapt it over time, and, you know, maybe every, maybe three or four generations we see a pretty significant, you know, delineation of the the design that they've been going with uh, on the Founders Edition card. This thing is super heavy, though. Uh, as you can see on the outside of the card, we've got that um, that 12 pin power connector that was highly debated that every that, by the way, I, I it is in there. It came in the box. I took it out of the box. I'm going to show it to you now. It's sort of hidden behind the graphics card in the box. And uh, I got to be careful, though, I'll be honest, because Rumor has it, if you take this thing out of the box more than four and a half times, your entire house is going to blow up and your children will be born blind. All of them. So that's something to look out for. If you, if you, if you believe the conspiracy theorists uh, in the tech press that want to bash everything that comes out into existence, even when there's no reason to bash it. Uh, but yeah, the 12... The 12 VH PWR power connector is there in all of its glory. Hopefully I can get through testing this card without disconnecting it 30 times. Otherwise, my dog will die. Again, terrible things happen when you believe the tech press. Uh, display connectors on the side. Again, here we go. We got three DisplayPort 1.4 and an HDMI 2.0 connector on there. I've Honestly, I, I've recently been using uh, HDMI on my new 4K monitor, and I kind of like it, and it's been more stable for me as far as... Um, 
like HDR and stuff, I would have some issues with display with DisplayPort and HDR where the monitor would crash. Since switching over to a proper HDMI 2.0 cable from my 3080 Ti, uh, I just haven't looked back. It's been super solid. So I kind of wish they would have went with two and then maybe two DisplayPort on there. Two of each would have been, I think, nice. But honestly, it's not that big a deal at the end of the day because I'm only going to really use the HDMI on my main display and then any other monitors I have, I just hook up over DisplayPort. But there you have it, guys, the unboxing for the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on this. Happy to provide this video for people if they were interested in seeing, you know, what all comes in the box and uh, or just share this experience of RTX 4090 Review Day coming very, very soon. Again, can't disclose the exact date. But you don't have much longer to go, folks. You'll be getting all those numbers. I'll be testing the 4090, 6900 XT, my 3080 Ti. And I've also been employing the help of a buddy with an RTX 3090 Ti Founders Edition so that I can include that in my testing. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I was I was never sampled a 3090 or a 3090 Ti. I got the 3080 Ti and everything downward. Um, but I guess, you know, relationships are better or there's more samples available. Maybe that's a good thing. And maybe there's going to be more 4090s available for launch for people that do uh, want to go ahead and pick them up. But I'm just super excited to be included along in the launch. And testing 4090s, this has sort of been like my live stream up to this point, is to be included in these launches with all these companies for all the big products that are coming out. Um, so yeah, this is this is a great day, and I'm happy to be doing this video for you guys. And I hope you uh, check out the review once it does go live on the channel. And I will catch you then for that content.